AMD today formally announced its Ryzen 7 9800X VD CPU. We have a review coming up. It is $480 for the base MSRP. That puts it $30 higher than the original MSRP $450 of the 7800X 3D. Some complications there we'll talk about in a second. And in addition to the base specs that AMD has put out, we also had a technical discussion with several of AMD's engineers. So we're going to include some of that information in this video. Uh, it's a little bit deeper than, actually it's a lot deeper than what you get in the press release, where they talked to us about some of the physical stack up of the X3D compute die uh, IHS arrangement they have and some of the benefits to overclocking and thermals that are yielded as a result of changes to the stack up. So uh, the 9800X3D, it's going to ship on November 7th. Our review will go out around that time. We have it already. Now, although the CPU's price is $30 higher than the original MSRP for the 7800X3D lately, as in the last week with the 285K being out, the 7800X3D has been around $480. So the same price, at least in very recent history, I don't, when this video goes up, maybe they'll come down, I don't know. Uh, and there was a brief period of time where the 7800X3D was actually stupidly cheap. It was like $300, $330 in some places, uh, although those times seem to have elapsed. Just as an example, this price trend history chart from PC Part Picker has it at $360 in somewhat recent history. Ultimately, though, at the current $480 or so dollars that it is, uh, or $450 even if it comes down, if you're planning to buy a 7800X3D and we're okay with it at that price, then you'd probably also be okay with a 9800X3D. It should be better. We'll see in our review and we'll make sure there are no major issues there. We also spoke again with AMD engineers Bill, Amit, and Josh, all of whom were in our AMD lab tour previously. Oh, oh wait, oops, that's not, that's not supposed to be publicly seen until our launch tomorrow. I'm leaking my own things while trying to make sure I'm careful about what I say about the 9800X3D that I might know or might not. I don't know. You'll know eventually. Anyway, we spoke with the team from AMD's lab tour that we did about some of the technicals. Can't share all of it yet, but we can get into some of the details in this video. So let's dive right into it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Montech and the K95 Pro case. The K95 Pro is a dual chamber enclosure with configurable options for storage and power supplies. The K95 has a deep 35 millimeter cable channel for management, support for dual power supplies if you want it, which could be useful for a thread ripper system, and ample radiator and fan mounting options scattered around the top, back, bottom, side, and front of the case. The front also can be mesh or solid, with the mesh running a higher porosity for more breathability. Learn more at the link in the description below. Let's do the specs. That's also not supposed to be out there yet. Let's do the specs first. AMD announced that the 9800X3D is predictably an 8-core, 16-thread part. It claims clocks up to 5.2 GHz boost and 4.7 base. The boost clock is contingent, of course, on specific workload and core load as usual. Cache is listed at 104 megabytes total with a 120-watt TDP that should give it more power budget for boosting higher. For reference, the 7800X3D's official AMD specs list the existing Zen 4 part at the same 8-core, 16-thread, single CCD configuration. There's a 5 GHz maximum advertised boost, a 4.2 GHz base, and the same 120-watt TDP. The TDP formula has not changed, so that's directly comparable. The AMD 9800X3D, then, has a 200 MHz higher out-of-box boost advertised than the 78. It has a significant 500 MHz higher base clock, and it also puts it on Zen 5, which has some additional architectural improvements. Uh, whether they show or not depends on the scenario we're tested. We've already talked about that in the Zen 5 reviews. AMD stated the following publicly. It said, quote, the 64 megabyte cache memory has been relocated below the processor, which puts the core complex die, or CCD, closer to the cooling solution to help keep the Zen 5 cores cooler delivering high clock rates and providing up to an average 8% gaming performance improvement compared to our last generation and up to an average 20% faster than the competition. And he has a footnote here that references the 285K. So that's what they're referring to for that comment. This revolutionary change, AMD says, in placement allows for extreme overclocking of the processor. It's the first X3D processor to be fully unlocked, empowering enthusiasts and gamers to push its performance to new limits, end quote. Speaking with AMD about this, so the 9800X3D is supposed to have basically the exact same overclocking experience as the other AMD Zen parts that are not X3D. So if you have familiarity with uh, curve optimizer, curve shaper, or just straight up ratio overclocking, kind of the standard old way to do it that uh, we do in our OC streams normally, all of that should still apply. There are probably some specific idiosyncrasies with the processor, but 
generally speaking, it's supposed to be about the same experience, maybe uh, with some different specific numbers you'll hit for targets. So uh, thermal's been a huge challenge for X3D historically. This has been known at this point. We spoke with AMD's engineers about this and learned about the flipped cache. And so the first question was, why not sooner? And AMD's Amit Mehra, who's been on the channel several times now, uh, told us that AMD wanted to do this since about 2019 when it was getting its first X3D parts in hand. And uh, it realized that it had to design the entire silicon ground up to accommodate the flip. Talk about that a little more later, but has to do with the layout and where they position things internally in the silicon. Zen 5, they say, had that ground up approach. So it was basically built with X3D future parts in mind, and they were able to shift the power headers around in the X3D and the compute dies to enable the cache to go under the compute die now. So that's the big change. So AMD engineers confirmed with GN that the historical limitation was thermal. This has been known at this point. Uh, however, something that was new to me was the, the historical belief we've held and some others, I think, in the media has been that the stacked cache was the sensitive component. However, what AMD said, noting to us that it never uh, officially publicly commented on it, that it could the people I was speaking with could recall, uh, AMD said that actually it was the cores that were sensitive. It's just that the cache on top of the cores plus the structural silicon around it was forming effectively a blanket insulating the cores causing those thermal problems. And these earlier iterations of X3D used a smaller cache die physically stacked on top of the base uh, CCD, the chiplet. And the size difference between the cache die and the compute CCD meant that AMD had to use effectively dummy silicon or in this case referred to as structural silicon to surround the cache die. This served the structural purpose of ensuring an even and level attachment both on top of the compute die and to the indium that goes to the integrated heat spreader. And because again, that cache die was smaller. AMD already shaves the silicon to ensure the same Z height despite stacking so that it keeps cooler compatibility. But the order of the physical stack was suboptimal. With the 9800X2D, the cache and the compute dies are actually the same size now. So this is a big change because it allows AMD to eliminate pieces of structural silicon that were serving as that insulator uh, because they're just the same size now. So that's no longer a concern, at least in those locations. So this means that AMD can uh, eliminate those on top of the cores, but it also moves the cache closer to basically down towards the substrate with the compute going up top. And so now there is a direct feed from the hotter part, which is the core complex, to basically what becomes the the indium or the solder, uh, the IHS, through the copper, through the nickel plating, to the heat sink. So it gets it closer and it removes that big barrier. AMD Engineering told us the following. So Josh Knight from AMD said, quote, the core was sensitive because of the cache. The cache was trapping temperature in the core and causing difficulties, end quote. Amit Mehra from AMD said this, quote, really it was the structural silicon over the core that was the blanket. In the original one, it was the core die that was thin. It was thinned down to, he was going from memory here, 20 microns or something. If you think about it, all the heat that the cores are generating is in that 20 micron layer before it hits that oxide layer that Josh was talking about. So what we saw was the heat would go laterally because it couldn't go vertically. Because of that, it would pool up. Now the bottom thinnest layer is the X3D and the core CCD is actually much thicker. I think that helps a lot with the heat dissipation, end quote. And then one more quote from Josh Knight here who said this, quote, every layer that the CCD had to go through to get heat out of the IHS was a problem and you just had more layers uh, back then, he was referring to. Because of the way we had to assemble the old package, even on top of the SRAM, there's that carrier wafer that's just more dead silicon up there. That's not a good conductor. It's going through all those layers, then it's going through the indium, then it's going through the IHS, end quote. Now, AMD is being pretty transparent here in its engineering discussion about why these were limiting factors and how 98 is supposed to improve on prior generations of X3D. Uh, and again, to just reiterate, even though they were aware of these limitations, the problem was that the silicon was not designed in a way that could completely circumvent them. And so it had to wait until later. They basically worked with what they had, hence the OC lockdown previously uh, to protect the, the CPU from uh, just uh, unexpected easy death from overclocking. 
and then they changed it going forward. So that's kind of the story here. Uh, Amit referred to the carrier wafer and the structural silicon as that blanket over the core. So Josh, Bill, and Amit also informed us that AMD has reduced the total count of bonding layers found within its X3D solutions. The company informed us that bonding layers are an oxide layer at various points connecting the dyes to each other. In the first generations of X3D, AMD told us that there were multiple intermediary bonding layers. They described these as, quote, oxide layers between stacks, end quote. AMD explained that the original stack had an oxide layer between the CCD, the SRAM, and then one or two others that our contacts didn't immediately know offhand without checking. The new 9800 XCD has reduced the total count of bonding layers, with our contacts immediately aware of one between what they called the carrier wafer and X3D, and another between the structural silicon and the base dot. Our understanding is that AMD has tried to bring some of these improvements to prior X3D solutions as well in prototyping, but we're not sure the specific details. So because we're not experts on silicon packaging, we asked AMD to help educate us on some of this. Some more quotes for you all. It's pretty good technical insight though. This one, quote, it was structural bonding layers that they had to put for stability reasons and to help adhere it. In the original package, they needed three and there was a standard safe thickness for those. When you look at the package stack up, those are some of the biggest insulators. So they were causing a lot of problems. We worked with TSMC on how much we can actually reduce that oxide layer and what we could do to make them less insulating. We prototyped it with some Zen 4 X3Ds, but took those learnings and applied them to the new stack up, referring to Zen 5. There are much fewer of them, referring to the structural and the bonding layers, which is the best, and the ones we do have were optimized to be less impacting, end quote. Now we asked about sort of lab or scientific evaluations of this, and in like for like lab testing from a more scientific approach rather than a practical product level, like complete product level approach, uh, AMD noted that it has observed a 30 to 40 degrees Celsius delta in heat, uh, like for like conditions, for specific tests against older X3D construction. Now, there are a lot of caveats here that uh, I, I want to make sure everyone's clear on. So that does not mean your finished product CPU in a motherboard under a cooler will be 30 degrees lower reported temperature than uh, a previous X3D chip. First of all, the sensors are different. They're not like for like 100% comparable uh, or they're in different locations at least. But secondly, that's not what this research was. So these were research tests conducted for uh, basically delated under a lower heat load and using thermal imaging, blowing some sort of cold air uh, at the CPU. So this is not a user condition. The intent was to show sort of the, uh, it's always easiest to look at things from a purely scientific eliminating variable standpoint early on. So that's what that is. That's what they were seeing. AMD has noted the extended voltage range in overclocking also gives it a direct volt frequency curve benefit which enables higher clocks to be achieved both out of the box and an OC. And back to that original question of why not do this years ago, uh, the answer was that AMD in 2019 had thought of it, but was not in a position to execute on moving the cache to the bottom yet because of all those points we discussed earlier. It said Zen 5 underwent logical changes to power distribution, and that allowed the relocation of cache. Now, if you're not aware, the original X3D CPU was a Skunk Works project that formed after Zen had already been finalized as a design, so it was not concepted before the architecture was uh, finalized, as far as we're aware. We have a full separate discussion going into the history of that, on this channel, and uh, it's actually really cool. You should watch it if you haven't, it's with AMD engineers. Finally, we asked AMD about the expected OC headroom. The team expects that the average CPU with decent effort, uh, not under extreme OC conditions, should be able to get maybe around an extra 200 megahertz or so F max, and we'll look into that in some of our testing. It might come after the review. We might do sort of a stock review and then uh, follow up with OC again. Joe Stefanzi hopefully coming out here to do an XOC stream Maybe that weekend right after launch, we'll see. We'll see if it lines up. But anyway, that's a separate topic. So you can expect some OC headroom here, despite previous X3D chips being actually limited on OC. There are a lot of future exciting possibilities for stacked silicon and CPUs, whether that's cache or otherwise. Uh, so for example, one of the things AMD brought up was wafer on wafer fabrication technology, which is starting to become a thing. That's not something that's ready for discussion yet, but something that we may be talking about in the future. So AMD is 9800X3D. It's going to ship on November 7th. We'll have a review live basically immediately or, well, I don't know if I can say when, but around the time of launch and uh, as soon as embargo lifts, that'll be up. We also plan on running the XOC stream and we'll probably do some other uh, fun research into that part, kind of like we've done with some of the others recently. And that kind of wraps it up. So in addition to that, we have our own launch tomorrow, November 1st, 
where we're going to be launching a tabletop gaming product. Mentioned that a couple times now, and you'll see the full details on what it is there. So check back for more. Thanks for watching, as always. Thanks for tuning in for this standalone news piece. And we'll have a ton of testing coming up next week. Excited for it. We'll see you all next time.